Capital Planning Committee meeting to order the uh, September 20th meeting. And uh, the first item of business is uh, we usually act on minutes, but I, we didn't get any, David. So our, that's in the pipeline, I take it? Yep. Okay. And will you volunteer again tonight? I will, yes. Okay, you're a trooper. We appreciate it. Okay, I guess, uh, you know, we heard from everybody last week, all the departments that submitted requests. So uh, I think, Linda, you're going to be the uh, star on center stage. I'm just talking about the financing aspects and, you know, what's coming from where and uh, any kind of impact, too, that it will have on our taxes and, you know, what would require overrides or debt exclusions or so right. on and so forth. So, okay. Well, I is, can start. Is, before you, is Scott here too? He is. He is. Okay, because I, I only get five pictures. Okay, that's good. I'm glad you're here, Scott. Thank you. Okay, yeah, Linda. I'm here. Yeah. I'm going to go to uh, share screen and uh, go to, hopefully that is the 22 requests. Um, try. Sorry, let me try that again. 22 requests, okay, share that. Oh, no, I'm in the wrong one, sorry. Um, that again you had it up there i had it the first well that was 22 okay so now are you seeing the 22 requests 23 23 okay oh 23 that's what we want <laughs> good we're in fiscal year here okay that's right 23 requests. So um, I'll, let me first just tell what the differences are from this and last week. Very few. Um, Did anyone lose theirs? It's gone. Again. Okay. I thought it was just me for a second. No. It's gone? Yeah. yeah it's just a narrow strip. I see the edge of it. It's Linda. minimized, Linda. Huh. Not in my world. Let's see. How about that? Is it better over there? Yeah. There you go. That's good. Okay. Interesting. Well, then you'll see a lot of the side of my head because I have to look at the, the other monitor to see what I'm sharing then. Um, okay. Um, I see I've got the wrong name there too. Let me just rename myself quickly so it's right for the recording. Okay. All right. Um, so starting with police, uh, they presented body cameras, which is the one thing that they want uh, paid for um, out of capital. Their usual request for a uh, cruiser is going to continue on the same plan as last year. So you're going to see that in the far right column saying that they're leasing it and the lease, lease payments are covered out of their budget. So the cruiser is not going to be in the capital request column this year. Um, maybe next year we'll go back. As with the, with each progressing year, the savings is less because we're getting where each each new lease uh, is uh, as a as a new add on. So it's going to be less of a savings each year. So we may be looking at uh, putting that into the budget in its entirety next year. But that's another discussion. So the body cameras is there. Then we get into highway, uh, dump truck and a five ton uh, dump truck sander. These are both. Uh, exclusively hot exclusively highway items um the three asterisks there are is next to three of the items and down here i'm going to show you it says these are top priorities according to scott and he would be uh he'll we'll go over that with him afterwards perhaps um now going to water we have the Cal callahan well reconditioning the water pump upgrades at the plant the upgrade meter reading testing equipment and the one-ton truck. 
So since these two items were 15 and 7,500, and they're rather small, and we weren't going to borrow for 15,000 or 7,500, I, I've talked with Scott, and we have now opted to put those over into their budget, even if it meant that we might have to increase the sewer budget. But we're not going to have those in a borrow column. Um, the water budget? The, um, yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, the water budget. Okay. And then we have the two other items, the 35,000, the 100, that will still be uh, borrowed out of, uh, borrowed and repaid from enterprise funds. B means borrowing. And yes, the next uh, next section is the sewer. So we've got three items out of sewer, under it, uh, the, the, the one ton truck, the roofs, and then this grant match to study departmental upgrades. 24,000 is a small amount and I don't think we should be borrowing for that. So we are going to leave that to be paid uh, directly out of enterprise funds. Um, and then borrowing to take care of the other two items. Now, $25,000 is a small borrowing item as well, but the reason I kept that in is that sewer roofs is $25,000 in addition to the $75,000 we voted last year. So in total, that's actually a $100,000 item. The next category is uh, the, the splits between highway, water, and sewer. Um, tractor is one third each, all to be borrowed. Payload or replacement. Uh, this was the one that last time when you, uh, last week when you reviewed it, payloader was up in highway and we talked about the usage from the highway department. And Scott has reviewed it again and uh, they have determined that one quarter, three quarters is an appropriate division of the payment uh, for the payloader. None of it is out of sewer. Is that right, Scott? It's, it's all water. Water and one quarter water, three quarters highway, none sewer. Correct. That would be correct. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then the Vactor truck, uh, they, he said, is in demand from all three departments. And you'll see this and the payloader loader above it are the other two items he has indicated with um, uh, as top priorities. Those, um, the Vector truck is one third, one third, one third to be borrowed. And then the mini loader replacement for 55,000, one third, one third, one third. Um, there's no changes here for the school. Uh, the ceiling replacements at 163,000 would be borrowed. We're not gonna borrow for 21,500. That would come out of cash. And then Hadley Media, uh, Alex did ask if he should be here tonight. And I thought that that was pretty straightforward. And I said, I didn't think he needed to be. So I hope that's okay with all of you. But he wanted 20000 in equipment. That money is coming directly, not borrowed, is coming directly out of the Hadley Media uh, funds. Yeah. And uh, So the items that are borrowed from the enterprise fund, mm -hmm be clear on that to people. We are borrowing that and paying the debt service from future water and sewer revenues, correct? We're not borrowing and increasing taxes in the town from the general budgets, correct? Uh, it does not increase taxes. It is out of the income stream and it goes, uh, there is a line in the sewer budget that is for payment of debt and interest. And that is what it is paid from each year. So some items will be coming off and these would be going on. Um, but to, to be clear, more is going on that has been coming off. So we have a couple of choices uh, within water and sewer. And I think it needs to be discussed further at some point is whether we're going to borrow for a longer time and sort of spread those out or whether we're just going to recognize maybe this is something we'll deal with when in the spring, um, you'll notice that all of the requests here for the capital items for these are vehicles, and there are a number of projects coming up as well. So when we get into those larger items, even though they're going to be paid out of the um, out of the budget and that line in the budget, that line is going to go uh, is going to increase, and it may well lead to um, an increase not in taxes but in the sewer and water rates. So that's something that the uh, select board and, you know, that will come up for them to discuss and go over. Um, 
there are um, reserves that these could be paid from in lieu of borrowing. However, in the case of sewer, it would pretty much wipe out reserves um, and water would have water would be able to absorb paying that fully out of water. However, um, especially since item, some of the items are split with the other two departments, it doesn't make sense to do it that way. That, that's not what I would recommend at this time. There's also another thing I wanna point out about that borrowing are these two trucks here we discussed last week. There's two one ton trucks. One is out of water, one is out of sewer. These aren't going to be borrowed. Uh, these are the ones that Scott pointed out were a two year wait list to get these trucks. Getting them in two years means borrowing in three years because the year we buy them is the year that we will borrow the money for beginning paying back the next year. So the impact of those $200,000 borrowing isn't going to be seen in, the, um, in either of the sewer or the water enterprise budgets at all for a few years. So we'll have time to work out these other uh, matters as to whether it will be a rate increase or some other way of dealing with um, the uh, larger projects coming up. There's a lot of infrastructure items to be dealt with and they're not on for this town meeting, but they are certainly, um, I don't know how to say that, Scott, they're, they're, they're in process. We have, we're taking care of other projects right now, but you have got other, these are ongoing needs, taking care of the infrastructure throughout the town, the sewer and the water pipes, isn't that right? Correct, correct. And, and one other thing I wanted to say to the committee is that the, these numbers I gave you are like, full ticket items or the full, you know, MSRP or whatever you want to call it, what money we're looking for, as far as the payloader goes and the sander, we do have equipment that we are looking to trade, but at the current moment with the uncertainty of, you know, if we're, if we're going to fund it or not, we haven't really got any firm numbers from anyone what that equipment is worth uh the trade-in of the loader that still has i would say some pretty decent you know value uh the other sander the five ton sander there's a little bit there so so there is a little bit of money going to be taken off the top of these items or right. or the stuff that's not that great that we can put sell on Minnesota or whatever and obviously the money would go to the uh, proper funds so linda right. based on what scott just said I, I i guess it's safe to assume we're gonna you know we'd ask for the full amount whatever the trade-in value is that gets netted out and if you borrowed it it would be repurposed to another project in the future, or if it isn't borrowed, it would be rescinded. Is that correct? No, I won't. Um, I don't borrow anything until uh, the purchase has happened. So, if the, um, if for example, the uh, the payloader came in at two hundred thirty thousand dollars, I would only ever borrow two hundred thirty thousand because okay. we borrow once we borrow, and they've they've got the. I mean, once uh, it's purchased and we have the equipment and it's time to pay for it, that is the year in which I do the borrowing. So let's say he he's, it comes in and he pays for it in March. Um, we are required to borrow by the end of the fiscal year in which we've made the purchases. So, and we can, um, Hadley's fortunate enough to have an, enough of a, a cash buffer so that we can sort of advance that to ourselves in March. And then we would borrow in June, the exact amount. And then we'd go to town meeting and say, uh, let's, uh, let's rescind that extra 30,000 in borrowing that we didn't need. So yeah, um, that's what I was saying. Yeah, either repurpose yeah. or rescind if it's yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah, that's, okay. that's Scott, right. Scott, you know, you know, the trade in value, obviously, before the item is delivered. Correct. Okay. We, we would we would come to terms on that. Uh, like the current dump truck we have on order, we want to trade, we're planning on trading in the one that we, you know, the, re, the one we're replacing, we're planning on trading it in, but 
they, they won't even look at it or give you any kind of numbers until the vehicle is there and r relatively close to being delivered because of, you know, how many more miles are on it, if the condition changes, et cetera, et cetera. So they won't really give you any kind of numbers until the deal is relatively ready to be closed. Yeah, that makes sense. So uh, yeah. in both of these instances, you don't, you always deal with the party you're purchasing the uh, new equipment from. You don't just try to sell it to a third party. Well, so we, we do, some of the equipment we do sell through a, you know, a program called Manissa bid. We put it on there and it's, it's a public auction, uh, which, you know, we do have some luck with, but I, I would feel that on some of these bigger ticket items, like, like the replacement payloader, if they're willing to give us $30,000 off the top of it, uh, and then it goes to auction, we could get more or we could get less. It's one of those things that it's unknown. I per personally like to go with the, uh, the sure thing. Uh, here, here's your trade in, uh, take it away when you bring the new one. Uh, we, we know what we have, et cetera. And it just on some of the bigger things, I think it's easier to go with the trade in process. Obviously some of the smaller stuff that, uh, isn't really worth too much. Like the, the highway one ton truck, I would just put that on public auction and whatever we got for that, we got for it. it's not uh, a dealership. It, there may or may not be value to them because of the uh, age and the condition and the rust. A lot of times they don't want to contend with it. Linda, I got a couple more for you. Um, so on the, on a trade versus, versus municipal, right? Um, Okay, we got the payloader for two sixty. We'll say they give us thirty thousand dollars for the old old loader. Um, we're gonna, you know, basically it's gonna cost us two thirty, and you're gonna borrow that two thirty. If yes. we go with the municip bid route, we would borrow the two sixty because we're paying the two sixty, and then whatever we get from municip bid goes back to the general fund. Correct. No, no, it would actually go to the fund in which it, that it came from. Okay, so it would go into the say the sewer or the water budget. It would go yeah. into those into those proportions. Uh, uh, well, wait a minute. You know what, David? I can't say that definitively Be because I I can't say every time we've sold something that I've gone back and looked up the article and make sure I had the one third split or whatever. But because we're usually talking about things that are three to five thousand dollars, and and mostly they have been coming into the town. I mean, if this clear water water item, I would send that to water. Um, but something like the payloader, we probably would put that back into the general fund. But we can certainly, since it's all happening in this year, it's something we can pay close attention to and make sure it goes into the right place. See, in this case, the sale through municipid, timing-wise, would be in the same time frame that we're dealing with this. Other times when we send things to municipal, we're just clearing off the lot. And I don't necessarily know when that particular one, or I don't necessarily go back and find out how many years ago did we buy that vehicle. Right. So um, the, the reason I ask is because I would hate yeah. to, uh, you know, take out borrowing for something like the payloader and then, you know, borrow the money for, I don't know, let's say five years or whatever it is. And then it goes on mm -hmm. to municipal, the old one, the $30,000 just kind of disappears into the, the ether of the budget and, you know, we right. never account for it, but yet we're still tied up with that borrowing for say five years on the item. So that, that's why I was wondering. Right, you wouldn't have any reasons, uh, Scott, to hang on to it and sell it like in a couple of years, would you? You'd want to uh, you clear that off the line. Yeah, I, I, I would recommend or, really like to see that if we were to buy a new one not hang on to anything and because they are old and parts are a problem and move these vehicles out and get rid of them out of our possession while they're still in a working order and and worth worth still worth some decent money to us i think we would be doing ourselves uh this service to 
hold on to it. And then, oh, this broke, we got to put money into it, et cetera, et cetera. That's what we're trying to get away from. So I would strongly recommend uh, a trade-in or Manissa bid immediately. And just Linda, just getting back to what David just asked. I know like recently, I, I'm not sure what Jennifer does with the Minnesota bid checks, but I know the sewer one that we just sold that sewer, the old sewer uh, septic truck, that that mm -hmm. money, because it was an enterprise, they put it into the enterprise, but I think the other ones okay. just got submitted to general, uh, the general fund or whatever, because it was just uh, uh, highway department things. It didn't, yeah. it didn't go back to our budget. Right. I, well, I, I can easily understand how that would happen. Um, and usually we're just talking about uh, really like two, a, a few thousand dollars under five, right? Scott, yeah. I mean, we're not, yeah. we not yeah. seeing large items. Um, in this case, I mean, if you, if it were something like 20 to $30,000, especially, um, you know, that's something, um, you, you raise a good point and something that, you know, we would all need to um, pay more attention to. Um, I don't think it's made a big difference when we're talking about a couple thousand dollars, but to be, to be corrected is something that we, you know, we, we should work together, Scott, and make sure when something's going out to sale, that this is an item that was 50, 50 or, or to clarify at that time, what it is. I don't think there'll be any yep. difficulty with this one because it's going to happen simultaneously with the new vehicle. And it could Correct. be something larger than two or $3,000. Oh but, yeah. Um, I, I mean, I, I, I would, I would really think that that load, that payloader would be worth the 20 to $30,000. Okay. I, I really, I, I, I don't hold me to that, but I have a good in feeling that it's still worth that kind of money, especially right. I, I think the payloader too is more readily available and we can make a move on a lot faster where especially right now we're still in this uh, really hot market of used vehicles and equipment. So it, it to get rid of it right now is definitely an advantage to us. I mean, the, the used market is okay. pretty hot. Okay. So let's just, let's make sure these go into the right accounts because I think that that's only fair it's, um, that we get these back into the right ones. And even now, Scott, if you found something that you thought went into the, should have gone into the uh, sewer or water, um, even now you can raise that. We, we can make corrections. Yeah. The only, the only thing Linda was that sewer truck and I knew, and I know that it went to the right account. We, okay. Uh, okay, we talked good. to uh, Kim about that or our sewer okay. downstairs. So. Okay. Uh, can, can I ask the, the board or David, what's your opinion on the trade-in? versus, you know, Minnesota bid, or, or you don't have one? Well, just speak for myself, I'd say trade it in because right now is uh, peak used equipment pricing. Well, relatively peak, things are coming down a little bit, but uh, we're never going to get more money than now, I don't think, for the, you know, the used stuff versus, um, you know, even in a couple months, who knows what pricing is going to be. Yeah, I, I agree with you, David, on that 100%, like on that bigger stuff, like especially the loader, maybe the truck or whatever, if if the numbers were right, definitely trade it in. Yeah, we, we washed our hands of it. We get it off our plate, and it's no longer a problem yeah. for Correct. us to deal with. Hey, uh, Linda, I was going to ask you back to those two small water ones that were moved over to the uh, budget, I guess you said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that the budget? I know they're water projects. So when you say budget, is that the water enterprise water. budget? Okay. Right. The water, the water budget. All right. Um, the water enterprise fund budget, the one that's voted. Um, there is some flexibility in there. And um, we just thought maybe it could be a, absorbed, Scott, or uh, or that perhaps we would ask for an increase if it couldn't, if you didn't think it could be absorbed. Um, uh, I don't know. There's a few right. ways we could do it. I think in the end, it's all the same. We can put it out of those budgets, raise the budgets, or we can put them back over in this column and just pay them directly out of the water. I mean, that's, that's another option. We can pay it directly out of water reserves and not impact the budget. But I know Carolyn's trying to work towards a minimum and what is handled, uh, what is treated as capital. 
So that's another part of it too, is that she'd like to see something like a $25,000 minimum on what we're treating that it, what even comes before the capital committee and, and goes on as a capital item. I believe so, we have a figure, Linda, it's in the bylaw and it might be 25,000. I could look that up again because I have the bylaw. Okay, I didn't think it was bylaw. I thought it was just a recommended. There was a year where we just, it was all shot because we did not have the, we did not have our free cash figures in time. It was right when we, one accountant was leaving and we weren't on board with the next one. It was very, and part of the problem was the delay in getting the free cash. And we had to go to a tall uh, town meeting in the fall and we had to borrow for, seven thousand dollars worth of computers and seventy five hundred dollars worth of furniture we had to borrow for every item because we had no free cash to spend so um i think that we might have gotten off track at that point and not not pulled it back on but we should have we should try and observe that twenty five thousand dollar minimum so this is uh this is how i was trying to address that but it, it certainly it can be done um either way I just don't want to borrow it. I'll see if I can pull that out and I'll send you a copy. Oh, sure. Okay. Relevant section. If my memory's right. So that's, you know, we're working on that too. But. Paul, could I make a motion on uh, Hadley Media, Police, and Schools to get those out of the way? Absolutely. Well, I was going to ask if anyone had any objections to anything on here. You know, speak now, but we could probably, you know, definitely let's go ahead with that then. David, I'm, I'm open to that. I'll okay. second that. All right. And, and that's as written on the spreadsheet here. So let's have the media, police, and schools we're voting on. So any further discussion regarding David Phil's motion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. It has to be a roll call vote, I believe, again. So um, let's start with uh, David. Yes. Randy. Yes. Chris? Yes. And I will vote yes also. So the motion passes. Now we're left with uh, highway water and sewer. Right, and let me explain how we, how we got here. The, uh, there's a change in the process this year and it's something that uh, we met with Paul about. Up until, um, I know what David, David Nixon always did and we started doing this when Carolyn first came on is these would these capital items would be somewhat screened and then uh, then brought to the board for further determination. Um, I, I, Paul expressed interest in seeing all the requests. And um, so at this point, we, there's nothing that has been edited out, edited out of the request list. And so everything is coming to you. Um, there is, we are not able to borrow a million dollars within the levy unless finance committee is going to really increase that payment back. It's just, it's just, we're looking more in the lines of four to 500,000. We have last year, we pushed it to 700 for various reasons and the finance committee did do an increase. So it, it's, it's a bit high. Um, the other thing that's happening this year, this is the entire year's worth. We're hoping that all departments did request what they wanted for the entire year so that you're not going to come to Springtown meeting and see another million dollars worth of request. This is supposed to be everything that you're going to need the entire year. So that's all there. Um, let's see what else did I want to say about that. Um, uh, and Linda, remember. this is all gross amounts. You know, it, it, this isn't the debt service numbers that we're looking at for that year. We're looking at the gross cost. So the debt right. service figures would probably, you know, roughly speaking, probably be 20% of that amount if they're the, five, well, if they're five yeah. year borrowings. They're set, it's set by the budget. They're um it's about three hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. And I think that's let me see what our, our budget is. Uh in the general fund. For the borrowings within the levy? Uh, the, for the borrowings within the levy, our budget is debt service of 387000 a year. So, um, and so we, we keep it there, Paul, even um, because we're doing the band borrowing. It's the one year, and that, that's what right. the payment is. And if we, if, if we need something more or less than that, we, we will take it out of the principal that's paid off that year. 
Okay. So, so how much principal came off of our total debt last year? Uh, about 385,000. Okay. Let me go back to the, let's see, uh, from the bands. So then uh, uh, this, this year, yeah, this year we're paying 285,000 out of the bands uh, in principal alone and 239, that's not quite right. No, um, and another 50 out of the levy. So, so it's almost, almost a wash. That's, that's how I've been kind of, because the interest hasn't been high, we've been kind of aiming for the same amount to keep that budget about what we're going to be borrowing. So if we're doing uh, paying within the level, if we're paying $387,000 worth of debt service, we're looking to keep our borrowing in the four to $500,000 range. And the reason I go above 387 is because historically all the requests have been higher than what things have actually cost. So we're, we're sort of giving them the benefit of the, of a, of a cushion there and not taking away that cushion. And, um, and it looks like and nothing, not one article here requires a debt exclusion vote. And we have no debt exclusion. That is correct. So what we used, what, at, at some point, what we were doing up to, up to a few years ago is we would go to that column within the levy and say, well, maybe we, we're only gonna be able to borrow 400,000 and the rest we're gonna shoop, throw into the debt exclusion and put them out to, um, to an override vote. And that um, the, the view on that has changed considerably over the last few years. Um, and there's much, much more thought going into whether the town is ready for another debt exclusion and what we're comparing that against. Because just so people who are watching understand, when we borrow and pay within the levy, we are paying it within the amount that the town has already allocated for the principal and interest budget for those purposes. So we're not increasing taxes to pay the amounts that are borrowed within the levy. However, when we go out for a debt exclusion, that means Let's say something, let's say we had that $500,000 item in debt exclusion. And we that means we would, after town meeting, if the item is passed, it goes to a ballot vote. If the town decides, yes, we still want to purchase that vehicle, then that $500,000 would be, would be borrowed. And the payments of the payments for it would be, um, would be, go into the debt exclusion that would be added to the tax rate. It would be added to the, oh, Dan, you want to explain it? Is he on? It, it, the, the, the amount that we're paying would be added to taxes and, and uh, it, it would definitely increase people's taxes. So we have been staying away from that. I think the last items that we re last large items we did under debt exclusion, we did the buildings and then we did a few more things over the next two years. And, and then we stopped uh, COVID, between COVID and the buildings, we, uh, the Capital Planning Committee just decided to put a stop to debt exclusion for a while. At some point, you may want to take it up again. So we well, we'll kind of some large projects in the future too. So, you know, we, we do catch our breath oh. right now too. Yeah. What kind of interest rates are we going to be looking at and how is that going to impact our payment schedule? Well, they are, they have gone up, haven't they, Paul? Um, gone we're looking up significantly. Like, have you done, pardon? They've gone up significantly in the last 12 months. Right. So we're looking maybe for bands, we're like in the three, three oh, to 4%. Well into the threes, especially uh, yeah. the, the rates are going up another three quarters of a percent. So. Okay. You so know, that, they don't move in lockstep with the uh, federal funds rate, but they do go up. Yeah. Still way better than you're getting for your home mortgages and everything oh, else. But yes, it's my still town. But that's so uh, next example. But they're more. It, it is a larger factor. And um, one more resource I want to put in here for the for the general side, uh, um, general fund side of things are, and, and this is something that I'm I'm where Carol and I are are working on now and you, you'll probably need to need another meeting because we need to uh come up with numbers for this but the balances of prior articles um 
if they can come back, we can use those towards capital as well. Um, if we have, um, as I was explaining earlier, I don't usually purchase, I don't usually do the borrowing until we know what the purchase amount is. And then we uh, ask for the money. Uh, we either rescind that borrowing at town meeting or as, as Paul noted, yes, we can redirect it. Usually it's not enough to redirect. Um, but in the case of the buildings, if we have balances in the three buildings and we are trying to determine that with each of the building committees, uh, it's possible that we might have a few hundred thousand dollars that we could then, um, since, the, since that money's already been borrowed, that we might redirect into uh, some of these larger payments or it might have to wait for projects. Um, I'm not up on all of the rules on this part. There are some limits, maybe you know more, Paul, on there's some limits. I mean, we couldn't use it for a small item. We couldn't use it, the building and convert it over for uh, for uh, the uh, body cameras. Um, Even more longer time period. Is, is that based on what's left in that borrowing or what the total amount was? It's just so, it's whatever is left. It's, you have to right. use it for an equal or longer, any article that's for an equal or longer that's so it might work. Yeah. It might work for the vac truck, or it might work for the ceiling tile replacement, which would be part of a building, right? Does that make sense? As long as it's for an equal or longer time period, you know, you couldn't use like a ten-year yeah. borrowing on a five-year capital request, but you could use a ten-year borrowing for a fifteen-year request. If okay. that makes any sense. Yeah. So um, I'll need to work with, um, I'll, I'll need to work on that, but we're trying to see if we can get that money back and, and redirect it for our purposes. I know that we will have other buildings. Um, so, uh, I mean, if it doesn't work for anything here, we will have things that we can apply it to in the future. But, um, but there's other capital articles too that we're trying to pull back on. Um, uh, on if they haven't been spent. And that might mean that we get some money into capital. It's not a huge amount of money. It's not, you know, it's not a million dollars, but it, it could be um, as much as a couple hundred thousand dollars, we're hoping. So that might help with these small ones. We're talking about that $25,000 uh, de minimis threshold. It might right. help in that right. instance or in those instances. Well, it looks like, you know, this, uh, we're pretty lucky this year, actually, because we're not going out for a debt exclusion. And it looks like we can, you know, everything's coming either out of enterprise funds or within the levy. So uh, we're lucky. And as, Linda, and as Linda pointed out, we met earlier and we kind of reversed our timing where all the uh, items are submitted. We're more top heavy now with the fall town meeting, and it'll, it'll be a much uh, leaner capital request for the spring meeting. You know, it works out better for all the department heads. So if the, uh, within the levy, that column there, the 1,046,000 roughly, um, if we were to approve all of that, is the 386,000 we have set aside in the budget just for the debt service where I mean, would that cover it, the 380? I mean, obviously, it's an estimate based on interest rates and everything else at this time, but is that what we're looking at? Um, well, we've tried to keep the borrowing in that column, and, and I can only go so far because I don't know what you're going to approve, and I don't know how, how you want to talk things through, and that's one reason Scott is here. But let's say you did approve everything in that column. Um, what it would mean is... Would it still fit within the 387,000 or would it, within the budget? Yes, it would, but it would take it out of a, long, a larger number of years. So instead of wrapping up the, this year and the next few years, we're going to be looking at 10 year, uh, more of this is going to spread out over the 10 years of the short-term borrowing that we can do. With the possibility that if we do get a bond in the next few years, that we would take any balance of some of them and send them to the bond. And then that's going to be definitely out the, the 10 or in some cases, um, I don't know with the VAC truck, I don't, you know, we might have some 15 year items in here. 
um, which would be the those larger trucks probably are going to be 15. Um, we'll have to find out you know, what those, those are. But um, technically, yes, but each year that you do that, because remember last year we did $750,000 in a column and it pushed it out. So each year we do that. Um, we're okay now. We we're last year. We we're okay. This year we we're okay, and we can do it again. But we are we are going to have a, a reckoning where we just don't have any more capacity um, within that three hundred eighty-seven thousand to handle more borrowing and within the levy without going to a bond. Everything that we borrow within the levy, uh, it, it has to fit in ten years, and we have typically tried to get it into five because it just uh, just because that's what we've been doing. So. Um, we'd have to sort of go back to the drawing board and find a, a, a new way. Um, we also, which we should be doing because this is not necessarily, especially now that interest rate is not less than 1%, this isn't necessarily the best way to be doing our capital fund if we can get to doing a capital stabilization, get back to doing to another stream of income that can somehow feed our capital fund and, and become our source going forward. Or if we want to do it this way and we're gonna to continue to have needs grow like this, then we would be wanting to go back to the finance committee one more time and say, well, thanks for the extra 50,000 this year, bringing it up to 387. How about another 50? Can we raise it to uh, or, or 100 and, and continue to increase that payment line? And the reason we do it by borrowing instead of just outright borrowing, buying these things is because we can keep that debt and interest payment even from year to year, even as the borrowing goes up and down. Um, so I think it's still worthwhile to, to do the plan this way, but we do have to start looking for new ways to cover capital. Linda, what number would you, would, would you love to see as, as the total in the borrowing within the levy? Um, five to six. Okay. Six. Some things get bumped out. Um, yeah, up, up to six. Yeah, can you? Still higher than, a, you know, ideally 400. But, uh, you know, we, we, have to, we have to grow. Yeah, I'm just looking at the stuff that Scott has highlighted as urgent, and that's going to put us over that number. Can, Linda, can you, since we already voted on police, um, school, and Hadley Media, can, can you add a column of, you know, you're talking 600000 within the levy. What did we already approve out of that, just so we have a number to look at so we know what we're working with first? Oh, what's left? Yeah. Okay. I, all right. Um, Sorry to put you on the spot, but no, that's there. okay. What what I'm showing you is a PDF, um, and I'm going to go over to my um, my my Excel, which you won't be seeing. I don't think you're not seeing my. Are you seeing this? Not yet. Okay. Dana, all right. Like and you you, you, know, you, you know what I mean? So okay. So. Roughly so, 200,000. Yeah, 210, so, Paul. Okay. Pretty close. Yeah, there's 390 left. 39136 if we use 600. Thanks, Randy. Including those trucks. Are we including the two trucks that we aren't actually going to pay for for a couple of years? They're not in that column. They're, they're in not. water and, yeah, they're in water and sewer. Scott, is there anything in the um, in, sewer? in 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 the general fund column that is in that same category that we will uh, be? Yeah, seeing? like ordering like the five ton uh, truck there, depending on build times and stuff. Realistically, I'd say minimally a year, eighteen months. That's not readily available. Uh, so you, w there's some time on that. Uh, the back truck, depending on uh, the model, some are relatively available, some are not. So you're talking the same 
thing again, a year, 18 months. Uh, the track, the case tractor a replacement would, I'm hoping for a relatively quick turnaround on that and that mini loader also, and the big, the big payloader, I'm hoping they have something relatively available, but the, the definitely the trucks, there could be a significant delay. That helps. It just seems like this method is kind of unsustainable for all of the stuff that we need as a town at this point. So I know that this is more of a finance committee thing, but I think we need to dedicate the cannabis money or some funding source to actually fund these in the future versus trying to jam everything into 387,000. I completely agree, David. I do too. We used to use the hotel motel, and you know, the food yep. max, and that was diverted away from capital several years ago. So yes, David, I agree with you totally on that. It's unfortunate that that happened, but it is what it is. Where did it go, Paul? Into the general the operation. Budget. Yeah. Okay. Do we have a, a dedicated place for the cannabis money now? No, it does go into the general fund, but it's something um, that's been pretty minimal and it is starting to grow. So if it's something that the committees, select board and finance committee wanna take a look at for a different treatment, this is the time. Because as we get, as it grows and we start and we continue applying it to the budget, um, as we saw with the sales tax, you can't, you, you just, you get used to it, you can't get it back. So this is, this is the time when you want to look at it when you're planning the 23 budget. Do we, do you want to not have that going into the general fund? What's the projected amount for this year for that? I'm just curious if it would even make a dent in, in this. Oh boy. Um, the Post agreements are going away. The state's planning on grabbing those. So that's about 85 grand. And I think the revenue that we've gotten from one is somewhere in the hundred range. All right. Well, even, so even 100. 100 for the year. Was that what we. Hmm. Let me see what I can. I, I can pull it up in a moment. And I, I don't want you to dig too much. I know that's more of a finance select board thing, but I just, you know, even a hundred grand a year or, and I know we have a second, second one coming online would make a huge difference in being able to afford an extra truck or two here and there, you know? Right, very, right. David, so really the, worked well, you know, in, in the past when we had the hotel motel tax going in and uh, things changed when that was diverted away. So it would be nice to see that happen again. Okay, so the uh, cannabis excise that we got for, back from the state, in 2020, it was zero. In 2021, it was 48,000. And 2022, it went from 48,000 the prior year to 132,000. And um, so that was an, 100,000 that we were not expecting. And so, and for 23, we have projected 150,000. So, like I said, now is the time. It was, we received it in 22, but we didn't direct it to the budget for 22 because we weren't expecting it to be that high. So this is the time to look at that. Um, we have, uh, what do we have online now, Dan? We have a, a one and we have a second one. The second hasn't even, isn't in these figures, right? Yeah, the second one hasn't actually opened yet. I went by and, there the other day and it said opening soon still. And um, yeah, I did talk to uh, someone a few weeks ago and they were expecting it to be in the next few weeks, but I, we haven't seen it. And then um, isn't there a third one at a, even yet an earlier stage? This could uh, be a good, yeah, this could, this is very promising as a source. Yeah, I, I haven't heard of a third location yet. Okay. All right. I know there's people that are, want to grow, but not sell. Oh. 
I think the select board only approved two cannabis location licenses. Oh, okay. You're correct, David. Uh, okay. So, so there you are. I mean, if you want to think in terms of let's commit now and come up with and, and, and work on these other items, that is, uh, that is a possibility. Um, but it would really, I mean, we, we can't let it go. Um, or else next year we're just, we're going to really start pinching down and we're, cause we are, uh, David used the right word. It's unsustainable that we continue to borrow so much more than we're, than we're paying each year. It can only work for a few years. Linda, is there any chance of using any of the ARPA funds that were supposed to go to redo the trailers for some of the longer lifespan things, like for example, the roofs um, or the, I don't know, even like a, a vac truck that would be maybe a 20 year item, something along those lines, or the pumps maybe that, you know, since we're not, I guess, doing the trailers? Um, I, I think there are some thoughts already about how that's going to be used. I wish Carolyn was here. Scott, have you had talks with Carolyn about that? I mean, I was in with you one day and I'm not quite pulling it up in my head. Were that we did, we did touch on it, but it didn't, Carolyn wasn't, I don't, I'm not sure how that money, how you have to decide to use it, but I know that I mean, David is correct. Uh, we did have that money uh, allocated for the trailers to do some work on the trailers besides the year mark from the state. But as of now that that project is, you know, not happening, it's just, it's just ex so extremely uh, over uh, our budget that we're not doing it. So I'm not sure where or what uh, Carolyn has decided with that funding that was, I guess, available for DPW, I, I, I don't know. She does have thoughts too that, um, that she would request this directly from our uh, state representatives when they, when they come up with their the various funds that they get to distribute that she would take maybe a truck that didn't make it and make the case for that. Um, uh, we talked about projects coming up and, and why they're not here, um, that, that we, um, with the infrastructure uh, distributions, which we don't, have info, we don't have enough information on, but we know that something is coming, that infrastructure is basically one of, one of our big needs and it can be coming out of uh, another source. So, perhaps won't be crowding these out. S Scott, um, with this a number of trucks or vehicles that are going on this year, you don't anticipate this many again next year, right? No, I, I mean, realistically thinking, we should be in relatively good shape. But as I've talked to you in the prior, Linda, we need, we need to have some kind of game plan in place for you know, future turnaround of the vehicles, especially right. that the prices are just getting so out of control that, you know, uh, turn, you know, rotate through the vehicle, especially the big, the big trucks, right. a, while they're still worth decent money to, uh, get rid of them before they're like totally rotted out, uh, you know, more mechanically sound, et cetera, but have, like a real game plan and a real funding source available. So as, as you know, as we talked about, just some kind of game plan moving forward on how we fund these, because th this isn't going away uh, just because we have a relatively new fleet, you know, the oldest truck every year gets a year older. So, and, and of course, obviously these snow and ice vehicles are, a very important asset to us. We, we need these vehicles to provide services to the residents. Uh, no ifs, ands, or buts. If we don't have this equipment, we can't provide our services. Yep. And, and another good point you just brought up was um, 
the price of them going up. That's another advantage to committing to these now. The payloader, I think you said, Scott, between when we didn't pass it at the annual town meeting and now, it has gone up in price. So this is a larger item yeah. on the fall town meeting than you saw on the spring town meeting. So getting in and placing that order at a certain price also has its advantages to us. It's um, so it's maybe it, it, to cut this out by 400,000 isn't necessarily going to save us 400,000 might save us considerably less than that. These are, these are tough calls. I'm, you know, it could be counterproductive. I, I, I don't know if it just, just a talking, conversation piece for you guys to take into consideration. I did have the conversation, of course, with the guys in the department that, you know, deal with this equipment and use it every day. You know, some are, you know, residents of Hadley, some are not. And, you know, the guys that are residents are definitely in favor of this equipment and they know that we need it. If just throwing it out there to you guys that I did have the conversation with our entire staff of what we are looking at, what is on the capital request, et cetera. So they're, everyone's aware of what's out there and everyone is in favor of it, especially like that back truck. It, it's a half a million dollars, but it, it, the usability for us is really unlimited. It would help our process out a lot and everyone you know definitely the guys that live and work in town are definitely in favor of all this okay anyone else i would entertain a motion to approve you you want a motion to approve as shown here has presented with it being way over what we can technically afford well uh, based on the comments that were made like scott was saying that the two trucks you know they're not going they're not going to be in this year so those are going to get pushed off so where's okay. that put us so the five ton is three hundred and ten thousand off that number and what was the other long-term item? 130. Uh, which one was that? Where you get the vet? Um, the vet. You mean the 120? 120. Okay. 120. These, these two. The Vactor truck you also said is a year or so out? No. You're muted, Scott. That one can be picked up quicker, correct, Scott? You're muted, Scott. You're muted. Yeah. We can't hear you. Sorry about that. Uh, yes, the VAC, the VAC truck, I would say probably <laughs> minimally like eight, eight to 10 months, depending on uh, what model we decide to go with. There, there is some availability with some models. Uh, just it's such a big ticket item. They build them and they don't uh, get delivered immediately. So, yeah. but definitely the, the trucks for sure, minimally an 18 month wait. Well, there's 430,000 right 30. there. So that brings us down basically to our 600,000, but- That's right. Uh, is that- So it takes out of next year's borrowing. Yeah. When right. you see the list, but that gives time for, I mean, maybe we can come up with another plan. But I don't want you all to abandon me. I'd like to see you meeting and help. You know, I I, I need help from finance committees for the capital to yeah. to come up with well, how we're going to solve this. The, the select board and the finance maybe can really take a serious look at these this uh, cannabis money and using it yeah. for capital. That, that's something that really needs to be looked at again. Okay, so at some point, if things remain the same financially whether whether it's next year or the following year and we're not necessarily going to be needing all these big ticket items but we're going to be needing more items every year i i feel at some point we're going to get squeezed to the point where there's nothing left to squeeze out 
And I don't know what the answer is. This is my first time doing this. So I'm just throwing stuff out that's crossing my mind. I agree that we need all this stuff. Uh, and yeah, if, if we can't, we don't have to pay for it all next year, then that's going to make life easier on the taxpayers. Uh, but I guess when, when the time comes, when we get squeezed and there's nothing coming out, we figure out something else to do. Anyone else? Do we have a motion? <laughs> no one. Scott, which is your uh, lowest priority of your list? Obviously, David, it's, it, it'd be the small thing like that, mini whacker loader, but I mean, that's only your talking 18 grand up within the levy levy just th that I, i'm really concerned david about that loader i mean the loader be honest with you if we don't approve to buy that loader we're going to have to definitely look at a rental there, we just can't take that chance uh being broke down in the winter time and have no backup we have we, we would be without a plan b and that's just really not a good place to be with the you know, the safety of the town, uh, that the big sand truck, uh, that really one's on its last legs. And then you're talking some time to be able to get this. So that, that's the thing. If we push this off till the spring or whatever, now we're another, you know, eight months further down the road of playing the waiting game. That's, that's the thing with all this, the, you know what I'm saying? It's just the waiting game is bad. And I just, uh, you know, the case tractor, another one that's, you know, smaller money. And we really need that. Uh, the, the mechanic was able to uh, weld some shims in place and get, get it back together. Uh, the, the leak is, it's minor, it's runnable, but we don't know how long it's going to hold together now. But it, it, it was, he did try his best to fix it. That's the thing. Some of the stuff is so old, we can't get the parts and the waiting game to replace it. It's just, and of course, same thing with that one ton truck. Uh, the one starting to have, the one we're looking at place starting they have mechanical problems, uh, rot problems. A few years back, we put a new dump body on it because that literally snapped off the truck. It was so rotted. To buy us some more time, but now the chassis is starting to uh, show rot, and it, you can't just walk down the street and get this stuff. Say like next spring, it, it just puts us further compounds the problem. I just, I just don't know. It, it, this is just really things that we really, really need, and we we need to move forward on uh, the back the back truck. If we forget about that, we we literally have nothing. We're going to be at somebody's mercy that they they'll show up if we have an emergency uh we did we did on on that back truck uh, a while back there was a hundred thousand dollars appropriated uh to put towards the sewer tank or a back truck and uh i gave that back to linda she cleared that off so uh that you mentioned you're talking about the sewer impact fund, and you know honestly, I hadn't even really thought about whether you whether there's some money available from that fund that could be applied to this. Yeah, I'm just saying that that hundred thousand I gave back to you that was appropriated. That you know we could have took right. off the top there, but it was returned. So it just I, 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 right, David. David, there 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 is nothing on this list that. I feel comfortable taking off. Uh, I mean, when you were our liaison, David, I know you came down, you looked at this equipment. Uh, I don't think you would say that you're against replacing it or it needs to be. Yeah, it's uh, some of it's in pretty sad shape, unfortunately. So, and Scott, if we took anything out of this, I'm sure you're going to be back to see us next year with the same request. 
Yes, and, and uh, unfortunately, I am back again with the payloader. Uh, you know, I was hoping to get that off the list in the spring, and unfortunately, uh, that did not happen. But like I said, once again, that is something, I, and I've talked to Carolyn about this. If, if we don't move forward on that, we're going to have to find a rental for the winter, and we're going to have to pay a rental fee and then return it when we're done. So, and you know, it's just like renting a car. At the end of the day, you have nothing, you bring it back. So that's, in my opinion, somewhat counterproductive to our situation. So can I make, how about a two-part motion here? Um, one is that we approve the highway water sewer and the DPW items as stated on the spreadsheet. And the other is that we ask the select board and the finance committee to dedicate cannabis funds in the future to funding capital item, um, as well as look at what we can possibly do to kind of mitigate this, you know, this large of a purchase amount with any remaining ARPA funds and also work the angle as far as returning excess funds from borrowing articles back to uh, capital reserves or some sort of capital funding. So that way we have more of a path going forward. What if we had, if you're gonna do that, David, why don't we make them two separate motions? You know, one for the actual approval and then the other is the uh, recommendations about the cannabis money and the uh, other funding sources. All right. So I'll, ex I'll accept that amendment. <laughs> We're, we'll, okay. we'll, uh, we'll approve all these items here as stated on the spreadsheet for now. Do we have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a roll call vote. Christine? Aye. Randy? Yes. David? Yes. And I will vote yes also. Now, David, do you wanna make the uh, second motion regarding the recommendation that we're gonna to make to the finance committee and the selectmen? Yeah, I would ask that the finance committee and select board um, dedicate all future cannabis revenues or cannabis excise tax uh, specifically for capital purchases and that any of the excess funds from these borrowing articles, if at all possible, come back to capital versus going elsewhere, either into the general fund or wherever they go back to. Um, and then if we could look at ARPA as well. Okay, a motion's been made. Do we have a second? Second. I'll second it. Any further discussion? Dan's got his hand up. Dan? Uh, yeah, just one thing on the cannabis money. That money is already accounted for in this year's budget which means yeah. more than likely it's accounted for in next year's budget. So if they take that 140 out, that means they're going to have to make 140 in cuts next year, in addition to the one-time revenues that we used in this year's budget. So it, it, it's fine to request that or to make that motion, but it might make sense to wait until after finance is met. I believe they're meeting on Thursday to see what they're gonna be looking at dollar wise for free cash. Cause there may be free cash that you could use for some of these smaller items for highway. It would be nice to have a dedicated recurring revenue stream. Yeah, and, and I think David's motion is just to suggest that the finance committee and the select board look into this. And I see nothing wrong with that. And there's, there is nothing wrong with that. But yeah, we, we can't well, we, the other committees, but we can request it as the capital committee that basically they need to, everybody needs to focus on a dedicated source rather than, you know, free cash is nice, but every year we're scrambling to do the same thing here. Exactly. Any other further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote on David Phil's motion. Roll call vote. Christine Pipchinski. Yes. David Phil? Yes. Randy Iser? Yes. Paul McCretsky? Yes. And the motion passes.
Okay, any other business? All right, hearing none, I'll call for a motion to dismiss. Paul, Paul before you actually adjourn, um, are you going to meet again before town meeting to see what adjustments might have been made or are you just, oh, or, uh, is, is there and if, we do, if we do come up with another source of funding for something, let's say we decide to use some sewer impact or I get money back and we redirect it, you want us just to do it or you want to meet and, uh, and approve and review? Why don't we uh, play it? By ear, if that does happen, then we could reconvene another meeting rather than actually set one up now. You know, we could set up a date and a time, but if it doesn't happen, then uh, what's the point, right? Without okay. knowing for sure what the uh, final decision would be of the uh, select board right. in the uh, finance committee. Yeah, we can, we can call something relatively quickly if needed. 48 hours. Yeah. yeah. Linda, I think, was asking for our, our help in the process. So if, if you need us, call us and we'll get together and help you out. Excellent. Well, you Linda, can. also, you know, one other item is it possible. I know we talked about this last year. You know, we're working from year to year, but uh, we used to get a five year projection, which was sort of helpful too to give us an idea of what we're looking at. Right. down the road and I, I don't know if that's in the works you know for the uh, for next year's uh, Carolyn was doing it in two stages we, we we had one about three years ago David had done it uh, for our last uh, bond review and it went out 10 years um, so much has changed um, but yeah 10 including our town administrator so it has to be redone but what she asks asked this time was she just asked for what they needed this year and her next ask out and particularly to these key departments i mean we know where we're getting the large requests from is that these are the ones we're going to focus on scott this could be <laughs> we're going to work mostly with you on like what is the need over the next five years and uh definitely we need to know where that's going scott uh, paul and it's nice to know as all the committee members the capital planning committee members to know what we might be looking at two, three, four, five years down the road. Definitely. You know, versus getting hit with it that, that very year, especially on some of these longer term, you know, big projects that are being oh, considered. Uh, it kind of read my mind. That was what I was going to bring up before we adjourned here. Um, I, I think over the next five years, even, we're going to have some seriously big items. We have all the capital items coming from the school over the next bunch of years. Um, you know, we're gonna have to start replacing things I imagine in the senior center in the library. We've got town hall exterior. We've got a lot of big, big expenditures that unfortunately keep getting pushed down the road. Um, so it would be nice to have a layout with all of this and, and kind of not just meet a couple times before town meeting, uh, you know, just, that way we can all keep this in mind what's coming up. So that way, when, you know, we do get a dump truck request, we can say, sorry, we've got to paint town hall, or we've got to, you know, replace the HVAC in whatever building. Uh, right. And we push it off. That's all. We need a, a long-term perspective. Yeah. And we've got to get caught up kind of with all this other stuff. I mean, Scott's coming here with all, everything he needs is, he's got a pile of trash that he's trying to replace. We don't really have a choice. So we need to somehow get to a, a, a good position that we're not gonna have every year, a million dollars worth of stuff coming at us for, for vehicles and equipment. Well, because Scott did mention, you know, this, this is an unusual year for yeah, yeah. I get it. But, but to yeah. David's point, there's a lot of stuff out there that's going to need it needs it needs attention now, and it's getting pushed aside, and it has mm -hmm. been for years. So we've got to really be cognizant of that and and try to figure out how we're going to pay for that as well. Exactly, good point, Randy. That that underscores the need for a five year projection. Yeah, just an FYI for you guys to you're talking about big ticket items. I know David was involved with this. Uh, we 
move forward today. We're applying for our uh, second grant for, you know, getting Mount Warner wells online. And, you know, if this happens and we are, can uh, complete phase two, phase three would be, you know, building of a building down there and a treatment plant, which would be uh, a massive undertaking of money. So just you, you guys are right. There is some major ticket items that are going to be coming up. We're not going to be borrowing within the levy to pay those big things. No, <laughs> we're, no. we're going to have, we're going to, have no. to be facing debt exclusion at some point. And so, I, which is another reason not to do it now, not to use debt exclusion overrides for these for these kinds of things when it, let it be the the larger the school project the um dpw building um and some of this um sewer and water infrastructure that needs to be done plus we'll see what's is coming um what's what's coming from the government and infrastructure so we've got a few things hanging out there that um we'll just have to see yes we will okay motion, uh, motion to adjourn so moved is there a second? Second. Now call for a roll call vote. Randy? Yes. David? Yes. Christine? Yes. The uh, meeting is adjourned. I thank everyone for their participation and uh, enjoy the rest of your night. <laughs>